Chipper may just be the Jason Bourne of the dog world. He's full of sophisticated software and he understands several languages. Plus, he can read, communicate and transmit images using his camera-like eyes. But not even his fancy wiring can override his regular dog impulses and Chipper soon finds himself running from the very people who programmed him. So begins the latest literary offering from Linwood Barclay. Chase is the best-selling author's foray into children's literature now. Uh, Linwood is back with us in our Your Morning Studios. Good morning to you. Good morning. Nice to be here. Uh, really nice to have you here. So the last time we had you on, you had just wrapped up a, a trilogy. You switched gears. Right. You've turned your sights on children's literature. Uh, tell me about the different approach when you're writing to a younger audience. Well, it's, uh, I, was, I was joking back second. I said, the books are shorter now because all the profanity is out of them. <laughs> um, but, uh, but no, it's, it's you know, I, I woke up one night at 2 o'clock and I had this idea about a dog that's loaded with software that's, you know, project at this institute, but his canine instincts kind of, overrule that programming a lot. So if he could be chasing some spy and if he sees a squirrel to go for it. And the whole idea came to me at, at two in the morning and I thought, it's a great idea for a book, but it's not really the kind of book I typically do for, for my adult audience. And I thought, it's too good an idea not to do. And so I started writing it and, you know, with the idea of writing a, this, a book for kids. And it was great fun. And, but the approach wasn't all that different. I mean, you still want a page turner. You want little mini cliffhangers all the way through. Mm -hmm. You want engaging characters. You want something to really, something at the source that, that matters, that something's at stake. So all the same rules really kind of applied as I would for an adult thriller. I love that it's got the classic lines of a boy and his dog, but with a yeah. really sophisticated modern twist. Tell us how you came up with the name Chipper. Well, the dog is named Chipper, of course, seems to be the most logical name because he's full of computer chips, but that was my dog's name. When I was, when I was 11 years old, my parents had bought a cottage resort fishing camp in the Kawarthas in Ontario, and this stray wandered in, and he was kind of adopted by different cottagers and until they all left, and he was left with me. And we named him Chipper. And, and it was my wife, Neetha, who said when I was embarking on this project, well, you have to call him Chipper because it's the most perfect name and I, because for a dog that's full of computer. And I thought, oh, yeah, it was so obvious I didn't notice, you know, but that that was the perfect name. But he was my, he was my mutt. Now, the dog in the story I've made as a border, border collie. My, the dog that I had was some typical kind of Heinz 57 mutt. But uh, border collie is a good choice because they're supposed yep. to be very intelligent. They're dogs. smart dogs, and uh, they're very smart dogs, and they're really they're gorgeous dogs too. I mean, they're such nice. And so I thought I'm going to make Chipper a border collie. No offense to the and dog the that I once breed? had. You know, no, I'm just well. It's there's no other breeds in the in this particular book too much, but there are there are in there's a there's a golden lab I think in the second one. It was yes. also similarly programmed. Well, that was what I was going to ask you. You know, you, you're well known in love for this trilogy and, and writing these page turners and leaving readers in suspense. And, and there is a sequel coming. Is it already written? It is. It's done. Uh -huh. uh, so it'll be out next year, um, uh, probably June, July or so. But it's done because there is a bit of a, you know, there is kind of a cliffhanger at the end of this novel of Chase. And I think people are going to want to know what happens next with the dog and with Jeff. Because, you know, once the dog escapes this, this secret institute, because they're going to put him down because he's defective, he goes hunting for this orphaned boy, and we don't know why. Why does he care about this boy he had, that he has to find? Uh, Canadian uh, children's audiences are very sophisticated. You know, we've seen all these uh, sequels with, you know, Land of Stories and J.K. Rowling, and they also really popular in graphic novels. Why did you choose this kind of a story, sort of the classic boy and his dog? Well, it's, I think it's, it's a much, I think, a more sort of down-to-earth. I mean, aside from the fact that this, this dog is this, as I say, I, I, like you said, I describe this as the born identity, but it's a dog. I mean, you have this sort of fantastical dog, but the rest of the world's really, it's rooted in reality. It's mm -hmm. the world that we live in. And, and, you know, there's been a lot of sort of dys, you know, dystopian type of thrillers and fantasies and wizards and all that stuff, which is great. But I, I want to set a thriller that's in the world that we know. Mm -hmm. And it's about sort of real kids, real people. And uh, and I think that we can I think that we can connect with it that it, it you know, like I know this world we'll know this world and you you know how to write a really successful suspense novel so this is great transfer it to fun. the younger audience uh, we were catching up at the commercial and I wanted to loop back with you just before you go the last time you were here you had suspended your U S book tour uh, for your adult literature yeah that, yeah, the travel yeah. ban and yeah. you wrote an article about it uh, how do you feel about that decision now. Well, I think it was the right decision at the time. I, you know, I was supposed to go and do a couple of festivals in Arizona um, in March, and 
and in February, uh, this this hastily planned, uh, I think, somewhat racist travel ban was imposed by the Trump administration, which the courts threw out at the time, and now it's sort of back in a modified form. But at the time, I was supposed to go to the States, and I thought, what would I tell this sort of Iranian film director who's been up for an Oscar, who can't come in, who couldn't go into the country while as I sort of breezed through and mm -hmm. I could go to my festival. And I thought, this is just wrong. And, and I felt so conflicted about it. I thought, I really don't want to go down during this ban. And so I didn't. And, and I have been down since. I mean, I had to go down to an event in New York about a month ago. But at that point, the ban was, had been, it, mm -hmm. it didn't exist. It was gone. But, um, and you know, and I could have gone down. I mean, I'm, I'm a dual citizen. I have two passports. And, and, but it just didn't feel right. And so I canceled those, those two events. You're happy with that decision? Yeah. Good to have you back here again. I can't wait to have you back for the sequel. I can't wait to be here. All right, the new book is called Chase, Ready to Run. We have been chatting with the author, Linwood Barclay. Thanks for being here.